Nope, no problem. Um, okay, so um, yeah, uh, I'll attempt not to use overloaded terms like free software, open source, whatever. Um, but but basically, my view is that we are working together as a global community to enable ourselves to create, um, and that. In some cases, words don't really do it justice. Um, as a result, I'm going to have a bunch of slides full of words. Um, pretty horrible, I hate those, but uh, effectively they're just my talking points for this. I'm, I'm trying not to have a whole lot of content. Um, so, without further ado, uh, first some embarrassing numbers just to give you an idea of the scale that we're talking about um, so that you can see the uh, way that we operate our infrastructure is effectively um, capable of supporting large-scale uh, development efforts. Um, so the OpenStack project, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, we develop software to manage virtual resources as a service. Um, a lot of people use the word cloud. You'll see it there in the logo where it says OpenStack cloud software. Um, I've said it twice now. I won't use that word again because I hate it personally. Um, but at any rate, uh, that's, that's what we write. Um, a lot of people have thrown out numbers about the number of... Uh, people who have contributed code to their project or, or projects with, you know, covered by their foundation. Um, I, I want to use a, a more uh, specific term. We, we have 2,000 active contributors, which we uh, calculate as the number of people who have committed code and had it merged to one of our official project repositories within the last 12 months. So over the last 12 months, we've had 2,000 uh, developers contributing code um, to our projects. Uh, we have 300 companies and organizations who uh, contribute resources um, to keep this project going. Uh, we have a technical committee which provides oversight. Um, it's 13 members. It's fully elected by the active technical contributors that you see there. So those, some, some percentage of those 2,000 active contributors uh, turned out to vote in this last cycle where we elected half of the technical committee, we, we do a rotating election um, mainly to help with continuity where we re-elect roughly half um, every six months. So we did seven, I think, new technical or eight new technical committee members this last election and we'll do any that have been in for a full term on the next election in six months and continue on that path. Um, so uh, basically uh, projects governed by um, their communities. And uh, the community itself, um, so we've got uh, 75 uh, user groups that have registered scheduling information with us, but a lot more that are just ad hoc um, all around the world. Uh, you can probably find a user group near you that uh, focuses on the software we develop. Um, we have uh, 250 unofficial Git repositories. These are in addition to the repositories for our official projects that are just for various bits of software within the ecosystem. People want to continue to follow the same workflows that we do for developing official OpenStack projects um, and reuse a lot of the same uh, infrastructure and services. And so we basically make our infrastructure that we manage open and available to anyone else in the community who wants to reuse it. Um, in addition to, you know, if they want to run their own copies of any of the software that we develop, and I'll get into that. Um, but, uh, but effectively, we, we have right now 250 different repositories for other projects that are just residing within our infrastructure as well so that they can take advantage of it. Um, our community communicates in the open on mailing lists and in IRC, uh, as many of others have said. And I'm basically making a lot of points that everybody else has, has already made. But, uh, you know, if it, if it didn't happen in the open, it didn't happen. Um, we, uh, we have meetings scheduled in IRC as well. Most uh, segments of our community meet roughly weekly in a variety of different groups, a couple hundred different uh, meetings that take place in several channels over the course of a given week. Um, but we basically have designated meeting channels that they're scheduled in so that people can lurk in those channels, pipe up and participate in meetings as they see fit. They're scheduled, they get logged with uh, minutes generated automatically by an IRC bot and all that. Um, we have a foundation. Uh, the OpenStack Foundation. It's a nonprofit trade organization. Um, to get into slightly technical terms here, uh, effectively there are a variety of different nonprofit organizations that uh, that exist throughout the world. In the U.S., we have uh, a handful of different kinds of nonprofits that can be registered. Uh, our foundation chooses to go with a trade organization style because that allows us to take financial contributions from 
companies who, who want to be members of that trade organization, and that way we, we don't have to worry about some of the headaches that other nonprofits have with how they take donations and, and so on that uh, they can kind of get them in financial trouble. Um, but we, we basically still operate like any other kind of nonprofit in that regard. It's just from a financial legal aspect, it's considered a trade organization. Um, we have a board of directors with 24 members. Uh, some get appointed by other members of the board. About um, two-thirds are elected in a couple of different ways, and then one-third are effectively um, provided by our platinum sponsor companies. Um, and uh, of those 24, one-third are elected by the members at large of the foundation. Um, which, as you'll see there, we've got 10,000 individual members um, registered in our foundation right now. Um, the foundation employs, uh, and I, I had to guess at this number because I didn't uh, have time to do a quick count, but I think it's 15 uh, full-time employees at the moment. Um, I am one of those 15, uh, luckily for me. Um, but uh, basically, it's as our most you know, free software foundations not the Free Software Foundation, but software foundations for, for uh, community software projects, generally fairly small staff. Um, of our 15 employees, um, four of us are technical engineering people. Um, I am more or less one of those. Um, <laughs> and then the majority of them are either administrative, um, you know, handling uh, tax processing and, you know, liaison with uh, legal and so on. Um, really the majority of the employees are marketing. Uh, we found that uh, you can get a lot of contributions to your project if you have uh, a very aggressive marketing effort. Um, and uh, we've got about a hundred member companies currently uh, contributing uh, and, and as, as members, paid members basically of the foundation. All of our individual members um, the 10,000 I mentioned there, those, those are free, um, you know, it costs nothing to be a member of our foundation um, as an individual member, but the member companies pay um, to help provide funding for our foundation, which currently has uh, roughly 10 million um, in accumulated funding, and none of that goes to supporting our infrastructure. None. Um, in fact, uh, I'll get to that here uh, in a few slides, but uh, the majority of that is marketing budget. It's uh, putting on two conferences a year, very large ones. We've got one coming up next week um, just on the other side of the Arc de Triomphe uh, in the Palais de Congrès. Uh, we sold out tickets um, as of a couple of weeks ago. All the passes are now completely spoken for. Um, but basically, we, we maxed out capacity on the, the large amphitheater they have there um, for the keynotes and stuff, uh, about 4,000 uh, attendees. Um, so that's, that's where a big chunk of that goes, and also we, we do a lot of um, basically trying to give back to the community, so a lot of the funds that we don't use and that we don't need for continuance of the foundation um, or to pay our handful of employees. Um, I'm going to wake back up. Okay, so anyway, um, that, that was more or less that for that slide. Um, but yeah, the, the funding, that's mostly covering putting on conferences. Um, we actually intentionally lose a lot of money on conferences because, um, you know, we, 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 we're not in the business of making money. Um, we're in the business of supporting and, and marketing our project and so on. So it's marketing, it's conferences, it's uh, salaries for the uh, staff. Um, and then uh, a lot of it goes back into community efforts, like participating in GNOME Open Projects for Women, um, you know, sponsoring travel. Um, if a lot of our uh, individual, um, you know, uh, non-affiliated developers need some funding to get from uh, Taiwan to France to come to the conference, then we have funds to help make that happen. 
um, get them hotel rooms, airfare, food, whatever. Um, so, um, did I skip a slide? Talk about the project, talk about the community, uh, talk about the foundation. Okay, uh, project development. Um, so our uh, projects, our official projects, are supported by uh, design summits. Um, basically that conference that I mentioned that's happening next week, uh, all week long in the background. There is another event going on, which is all of, or at least some significant percentage of, our developer community getting together to plan um, for the next six months of development. And um, every person who has contributed and gotten a patch merged um, to even just one patch to one official project out of the couple hundred official projects that we have, uh, we give them free pass. Um, and as I said, if they can't afford travel, we've got travel budget to help get them there as well. Um, so we really want all of our developers, um, no matter how small their contribution is, we want them engaged and becoming increasingly more engaged in planning and design of our projects. Um, so as I said, 200 repositories, those are the official uh, project repositories, anything from server projects to, uh, you know, uh, clients for interacting with the API servers to uh, documentation. We have repositories for books that have been collaboratively uh, written and uh, published. Um, repositories for managing our infrastructure, and I'll get into that in, uh, in the next slide, I think. Um, but, but basically about 200 different Git repositories right now um, that are official, active parts of our project. Um, and uh, every change to any one of those repositories goes through our code review system. Um, effectively, much with the rest of working in the open, if it didn't get reviewed, it didn't happen. We believe very strongly in, in general, having at least a couple of knowledgeable developers for the target project that that change is, is um, uh, wanting to get merged into, need to review it. But in addition, uh, it's open code review. Pretty much anybody can sign up for an account and immediately start reviewing changes that are being proposed and comment on them, on them point, out, uh, point out any potential problems with them. Um, and bring them to the attention of the people who are writing the, the proposed change or with people who um, may be making the decision on whether or not that's fit to merge. Um, there we go. Um, and uh, as I said, those people who, who make that decision are a decentralized group. Um, for any given project, uh, it is governed by a group of core reviewers who collectively have the ability to um, decide whether to block a change or to approve it and to have it merge. Um, so there's no like you know one person who acts as the gatekeeper for commits going into a project. It's a collaborative effort, um, and uh, for pretty much all of those projects, anyone who wants to participate in reviewing code. Um, for, and I, I just went back, um, anyone who wants to participate in the review process, if they're reviewing well enough, providing good enough feedback, and doing so on enough changes, then they'll generally get um, promoted into that group of core reviewers by the existing core review group for that project. Uh, so. Projects are, are generally always looked, because again, as I said, we want to have at least a couple people review every change. So um, for every patch that's written for a project, you need a couple of people on hand to also review that patch. And as a result, uh, that means you need a lot of people engaged in the review process. Um, I, I say a couple of people review it, a couple of actual core reviewers review it, in addition to large amounts of community review that tend to go on on any, in, on any, any given change. Um, so I'll go through code review. Um, we have a decentralized group approval process and we have lots of testing. Um, the average change going into one of our official repositories has to pass about 10 different uh, test jobs that vary depending on the target project. Um, some of them take up to an hour to complete because we are in the process of automating software as a service platforms. 
Um, we basically have to try to stand up an entire integrated environment that is a scaled down version of akin to what some service provider might run. Um, so stand up an entire environment and then try to see what this change is going to do, uh, test a whole lot of interactions between different components, different pieces of software, and see if it fails. And if it does, well, then we can't merge that because uh, we effectively enforce that every test has to pass um, and our gating system, as, as we refer to it, um, will not let a change merge unless it passes all, all of the tests that are required um, in addition to core reviewers actually reviewing and approving that change. Um, and so over the past six months uh, in support of that, um, we merged 20,000 changes to our various projects. Um, now that, that includes uh, the 200 official projects, but also the 250 uh, unofficial projects within the ecosystem. On average, those tend to be a lot smaller in scale, um, just because of the way that sort of development goes. But overall, we merged 20,000 different uh, commits. Um, and uh, to test those, we ran uh, roughly 1.8 million jobs. Um, as I said, uh, many taking an hour or more to complete, but on average, uh, somewhere in the 30 minute range. Um, so that's effectively using uh, an eight uh, megabyte uh, VM with eight processors, uh, running that test on average for about 30 minutes. And so you can imagine the, the actual scale of resources that are required to perform that testing. Um, we, we archive and analyze uh, basically in this last six month cycle, 18 terabytes of log data from those tests. We wanna be able to go back through and identify if, if we come up with a bug um, that uh, you know, was not covered by our testing for some reason, we'd like to be able to look back through the last six month development cycle and see, well, were we seeing this in other tests that we were running and it was causing you know, non-critical conditions and, and how, do we, uh, how do we basically identify where that was introduced potentially. Um, so we have an infrastructure team managing our project infrastructure. Um, we use the same workflow that the OpenStack projects use uh, to do our uh, infrastructure management. Uh, everything is kept in configuration management um, in Git repositories. All changes to uh, that configuration management go through code review. We have a team of core reviewers. Um, we have uh, five root sysadmins. These are the start and end of the list of people who are able to log into those systems remotely via SSH and troubleshoot if something goes wrong. Um, generally our take on infrastructure management is if something breaks, then we're all developers, develop some automation that keeps that from happening again, um, just like any kind of regression. Uh, we don't want to have to carry pagers and have people interrupt us in the middle of doing our work during the day and anything else, so um, you know, if something fails, you find a way to make it no longer fail. That's priority number one, infrastructure management. Um, so as a result, of course, it's all automated, it's all going through code review, and we have countless numbers of contributors within our community um, who are helping us manage our infrastructure. Um, you know, of those uh, couple thousand active contributors over the course of the past six months, um, hundreds of them have contributed patches to help configure or manage some component of our project infrastructure. We encourage everyone in our project to participate in management of the infrastructure that's supporting the project. We think it's a community effort, um, just like our community has you know, very vibrant uh, quality assurance team and uh, documentation team and translation team. We think infrastructure management is in the same class. Um, it's something that you need your entire community to help participate and make happen. Um, so. Uh, that takes us to the infrastructure systems themselves. Uh, we, like any software project, we try to make sure that it's thoroughly documented. So we've got ci.openstack.org um, where you can go in a web browser and look at current documentation for how we are managing all those systems, what is running on them, uh, how to troubleshoot them when things go wrong, etc. Uh, we use all free software um, as a basic tenant. We do not believe that uh, it is in our project's best interest to use any commercial proprietary software, even if it's donated to us, um, because that has dangers of its own that I'll, I'll mention in a moment. 
Um, but uh, we run the entirety of our infrastructure on virtual resources because as a project we like to eat our own dog food. These are virtual resources donated to us by the companies that are running our software. So our software is actually being written and tested on our software um, as donated to us by member companies. Um, we have 50 Git repositories for various components of our infrastructure, anything from software that we've written to help support our development efforts to uh, you know, repositories that are straight configuration file sets or um, configuration management uh, content scripts and so on. All of that is also free software published under the Apache software license, version two, just like all of the OpenStack project. Um, we also run a lot of other applications that we didn't write, but um, I've got some of them listed there as an example. Um, we encourage our uh, developers to contribute back to those projects as well because that's, that's how free software, open community software works. Um, if we have a need that's not met, but uh, you know, most of what we want to do can happen with one of these various projects, um, then we would like to get whatever missing feature that, uh, that we think we could use integrated back upstream. We've, we've also had some very unfortunate experiences with um, running our own forked copies of things. Just in general, try not to do that because if you don't have the development resources to get patches back upstream into a project you consume, um, then you will find that you very quickly also lack the development resources to maintain that divergence from that project. It's a lot easier if you just find a way to work with that other part of the global software community to get the things that you need to do working. Um, we're, we're all in it together, basically. Um, so it's not just your project, your community, it is the global community. Um, and that's the way that we prefer to look at it. Um, we also run some hosted or use some hosted services. And the reason that I put some of these examples up here is to talk about some poor experiences that this has resulted in. Um, not that I necessarily want to talk trash about anybody. Some of these are run by our member companies. Um, but GitHub, as an example, uh, like many of the projects mentioned in here, uh, we push a mirror to GitHub. We've never actually done our development on GitHub uh, as a project. However, because people find our software on GitHub, they assume, no matter how much documentation you put in very visible places in the software, they assume that GitHub workflow is how your project is developed. I personally think that GitHub is a bit of a disease in the global software community, um, just because it's not free software. It's a proprietary service. Um, they don't let you download and run your own GitHub. Um, not that I've ever been able to find. And uh, it, it tends to, because it's so easy to use and so available, um, it tends to cause a lot of projects that otherwise would use free alternatives to rely heavily on GitHub. Um, we as a project don't rely on it. We simply push a mirror to it but it causes confusion within our community. And also, their APIs are not very reliable. Um, we frequently find that we're getting API calls dropped, blocked. Um, GitHub, some people may, may not realize it uh, because they only interact with it infrequently, but it goes down a lot. Um, and if your infrastructure is reliant on GitHub to operate, then your infrastructure very well could run into some issues if you are attempting to pull from there. Um, for example, uh, there was a point in the past where we consumed some dependencies from GitHub and some of our tests. And um, when you're running tests constantly, you can find that for some subset of the day, your tests will just arbitrarily fail because GitHub was not available um, from some part of the world. And sometimes from all parts of the world for an hour or more at a stretch. Um, so uh, Launchpad uh, is free software, but only kinda. Um, it's Afro GPL v3, which sometimes can have some problematic implications if you're trying to run copies of your own, um, particularly with the way that the Afro clause uh, has uh, implications on uh, your obligations 
when running that software and making it available over the internet. Um, but also because, uh, similar to Mozilla, um, it has a lot of trademarked collateral within it that you can't reuse. So if you wanted to run your own launch pad, you, it's on you to actually come up with quite a lot of content that's required by the application to substitute in for all of the otherwise trademark infringing components if you try to run your own Launchpad. Um, so we're using the hosted version of Launchpad that Canonical runs, but it's also pretty unreliable and we're partly at fault for that. Um, we are a very high volume user of it. Uh, we only use it for bug management at this point, issue tracking, but we hired away most of the Launchpad developers um, into our project. <laughs> Various member companies have basically picked off all, but now there's basically one person who was around for the uh, original development of Launchpad, and they've since hired back on another person to kind of help keep it running. Um, but it has stagnated, um, and it's, it's not easy to contribute back to um, as a project. We've, we've had people try to get patches back into it, and they sit for a year or two. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, the third item that I had on there um, was TransFX. TransFX was free software. TransFX is no longer free software. They're another one of those dangers um, that lurk in the, the open source idea of uh, project management um, where they took community contributions, they had an open core version that had some additional features, um, but then over time they decided to stop merging changes back into their free version. Um, it stagnated, uh, and now they're effectively getting rid of it. And they have closed off pretty much all community contribution to TransFX. And so um, Launchpad, uh, as I mentioned, um, we're really struggling with it, so we've started developing our own issue tracking software. Um, we've tried a lot of the other ones that were out there, and they lacked, you know, substantial um, architectural support for our development model. So we effectively have had to start another project from scratch called Storyboard. TransFX, uh, we're evaluating community uh, alternatives now. Um, we've got it narrowed down to a couple. Uh, somebody mentioned their project was using Poodle. That's one of the ones we're looking at. Another is uh, called Zanata um, that's owned by uh, Red Hat at this point. Um, and uh, therein lies a, a, an excellent uh, example. Um, when we stated that we were looking for uh, translation platforms to move to from TransFX. Zanata said, well, we've got software you can run um, if you want to try it out and see if your community is willing to use it. And we said, great. Um, they said it's free software, so that, that met our criteria. Um, and it's, uh, it runs on JBoss. Um, it runs on JBoss Enterprise. Well, um, do, you, do, you, do you have a way to run that on a free platform instead? Uh, well, yeah, we can give you a license to JBoss Enterprise, no problem, as many as you need. I mean, Red Hat's a member, no, that's not going to work for us. We, we would really like anybody to be able to rerun the same software we're running to test it, to, to try manipulating it and so on, um, and to be able to contribute back to our efforts. Uh, so they said, well, there's, there's a community JBoss platform called Wildfly, and it doesn't really work with that. Um, but but we'll look into it. And we said, well, if you need resources to help make it work on Wildfly, we've got a bunch of developers. We'd be happy to contribute, make that happen. They said, no, no. Basically, it became a little bit of an embarrassment um, within Red Hat. I think that um, you know, they were not entirely open source with their open source projects in some places. Um, so the Zanata team worked together to get it working on the community Wildfly. And that's what we're evaluating at this point as an option. Um, the most embarrassing item on that list of all is our foundation site, our project web presence, www.openstack.org, was unfortunately contracted out to a third-party web development firm back at the start of the formation of the foundation, and our infrastructure team has been actively engaged with them ever since in trying to wrest control of that um, to get the, and it's based on Silverstripe, which is free software, but to get the actual custom tooling that has been written and the content into a revision control system and into code review and managed by the, the same community um, that it's supposed to be supporting. So um, there, there is effort underway to make that happen. But anyway, um, I think I've probably gone over time. Um, so uh, questions, if there are any, or... Uh,
No, thank, thank you, Jerry. <laughs>